you so much for being here and coming out to the Bascom tonight. It is our great honor to open this exhibition tonight. The Bascom has been offering the jury annual exhibition for a number of years, and we are very proud to be able to give away $5,000 in cash also to the winning artist. This year was the absolute toughest competition we have ever had. We had over 400 applications coming in for this exhibition. So what you are seeing is the creme de la creme, and I'm glad it wasn't my job to select them because I don't know how she went through all of those works and selected these. Annette Blaugrun is our juror this year. With great honor, I give you Annette Blaugrun. I'm really happy to be here. It's been a pleasure to work with Kay. And also, uh, I'm grateful to Linda for inviting me here and giving me the opportunity to select the Bascom's current exhibition, American Art Today. I've made a few notes because I've been given only 10 minutes and I want to make sure that you don't have to stand too long. So um, I'm very impressed with your state of art facility here and likewise with the art that has been submitted to this competition. With over 400 works to choose from, let me tell you, it was difficult to select only 49 pieces, the ones that are on view, and in fact, I was asked to choose only 40, but I couldn't limit it anymore. So <laughs> anyway, I want to congratulate all the artists who made it into the show. My credentials for being asked to jury the work, in addition to what Kay told you, come from years of looking at and studying art. At the National Academy Museum, I participated in numerous juries with the National Academicians who, as you may know, are distinguished artists from across the country. Uh, they have held annual exhibitions since 1826, but only in the last 10 years have they begun to jury them. In addition, I have jury shows at the National Gallery in Bermuda and in Russia, as well as art institutions across the nation. It is interesting to me that even when there are several jurors, for the most part, agreement about the best work is easily come to. The few pieces that are disputed are settled by what we call a passion vote. So each juror can choose one that the other jurors might not like. Working uh, as a committee of one this time, I only had myself to argue with. The qualities I was seeking were skill, execution, originality, talent, and variety for the overall disposition of the exhibition. Thus, the show encompasses a range of tastes and interests, like a Chinese restaurant, one from column A and one from column B. I tried not to be limited by my own preferences, therefore you'll find a mix of representational and abstract subjects that include figurative, landscape, still life, and genre paintings, sculpture, ceramics, baskets, and decorative arts. Over a period of days, I tested my selections again and again to make sure I had chosen the best. Uh, I continued to or I examined form, color, and content. Each time I scrutinized the images, I came up with almost the same conclusions, and until at last I had an A-list and a B-list. And I want you to know, my B-list would have made quite a good show too. As the art critic Clement Greenberg has said, quote, the objectivity of taste is demonstrated in and through the presence of uh, consensus over time. To which the artist Marcel Duchamp added, quote, but consensus over time is an historical process that cannot be easily compressed into a brief encounter with a work of art. And so I invite you to return to this exhibition several times in order to hone your own taste. 
Sometimes, after looking long and hard, the very piece you hated or ignored at first becomes the one you favor. Continue to go to museums and train your eye for quality, taking for granted that the work in museums is of the highest quality. And as you become increasingly sophisticated, your taste will inevitably change. I'm sure you know some collectors who periodically upgrade their collections or change their focus as they become more knowledgeable. There is no singularly pervasive or dominant style in the art of today. In fact, for many artists, their stylistic development encompasses a variety of conservative and advanced modes and mediums. Academic art depends on the tried and the proven, the recognizable and the accepted. But each generation questions its artistic past and tries to invent something new. Consider the French Impressionists, who, were so, who are so universally popular today, and remember that when their work was first exhibited in the 1860s and 70s, it was only displayed in the Salon des Refusés, the gallery of the rejected ones that were not allowed into the official Paris Salon. And after a while, the rigid academic standards of artists like Ang and Bouguereau, with their historic and mythological subjects, were replaced by the looser writer work of Renoir, Monet, and Degas, whose subjects were those of everyday life. This quest for the new, the unconventional, the different, and the original goes on. And we must pay homage to those who are adventurous by looking until we either accept or with reason reject. Duchamp's ready-mades, for example, his bicycle wheel of 1913, and especially the urinal he called the fountain of 1917, were scorned when first exhibited, yet they are in museums today. His new descending the staircase, that cubist futurist destruction of a figure shown in the groundbreaking armory show of 1913, was mocked as rude descending the staircase. That exhibition of approximately 1,300 European and American paintings, sculptures, and prints encapsulated the development of major 19th and 20, early 20th century movements from neoclassicism and romanticism through cubism, fauvism, and the various expressionist styles. When the general public and conservative artists, they saw the show, they met it with enmity, while younger painters were excited by it and embraced it. But that legacy has been passed down to the artists whose work is on view in this gallery. While figurative art resurges in new ways periodically, witness the work of John Curran and Lisa Yuskovich, and various forms of abstraction persist, currently it is the candy piled on the floor in the corner of a gallery, electronic creations, sharks in formaldehyde, and the detritus or commonplace objects grouped in a distinct space either unaltered or glued, painted or nailed, that are today's urinals. Will they evolve into museum pieces or will they be forgotten? Some of them by design will disintegrate in time. But such are the new creations of our era that force us periodically to re-examine the definition of art. The Bascom exhibition reveals the diversity of subjects and media in which artists in the United States are now working. Feast your eyes, open your mind, and I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you.